Hey everybody, Haku here with my review for uh, Boku no Hero Academia Season 3 Episode <laughs> Season 3 Episode 11 I was about to say chapter, I've got manga on the brain Sorry uh, So yeah, let's talk about this episode This is one of the best of the entire show I think I was expecting it to be I was maybe expecting too much But it was still amazing It still had me very, very emotional While watching I think pretty much everybody uh, Who I've watch their videos of it already before making my own. Uh, most of them had a very emotional reaction to it as well. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, talk about it from the beginning so I don't forget anything. That's probably the best way to discuss this. And then there's some more stuff to discuss in general and I'll save that for after I go through it part by part. So at the beginning we have this scene before the opening credits and I actually love this. This is kind of anime only, uh, but kind of not. It's canon. Everything that was said and everything that happened is canon, but uh, in the manga it was more like we just got a quick flash to it later on, where as with this they moved it up and they gave us like a whole conversation scene, and I really like that. I think that, um, it, I, I thought it was so good. I loved it. Uh, also, uh, yeah, I like uh, Nana's general design and the way she looks in the anime and all that. There is some discussion to have about that, but I'll save it till the end. Uh, the students have successfully escaped and there's a big evacuation going on because a chunk of the city's been leveled and I'm only left to assume that a ton of people have had to have died in all of that. Uh, all for One uses Nana as sort of a means to pick and prod at All Might and piss him off to get him to uh, sort of lose his cool and let his guard down a second so that All for One can blow him up into the air and all that. And I like that Gran Torino brings that up where he's like, this is the mistake you made six years ago. This is the mistake you keep making where you humor... I don't want to say you humanize the villains too much, but you, uh, you always have to engage in dialogue with them. You always have to try to talk to them, and it never works out for you because they're just using that against you. Don't try to trade words with this guy. Um, the reporters are broadcasting everything's going on. We see that the public is starting to lose faith. Like, man, these villain attacks happen all the time. Uh, I know All Might's gonna handle this, but damn, what a problem, what an inconvenience this is. Uh, then we have uh, All For One sort of questioning, is it okay for him to deal the final blow? I like this a lot because he brings up, he's like, Shigaraki, I've had him doing all this work, and he's been doing all this, eroding all the faith in heroes. Is it right for me to come in and strike the final blow? Oh, uh, well, I'm going to anyway because I hate you, All Might. And I like that. That he's like, as much as you hate me for killing your master, I hate you because you took away all this stuff that I was building up. Uh, he goes for an attack. All Might can't dodge it because there's random innocent citizens behind him. And I love the use of just regular ass citizens behind him. Um, I really like that. It's, I think it's better than using a uh, character that we actually know. Because it's kind of this... Uh, this storytelling where All for One doesn't really care for who it is, he's just going to attack a random whoever, but All Might, even though it's a random whoever, he's the symbol of peace. He's not going to let even a single person he could prevent from dying die. Uh, so it it's a lot of storytelling into who All Might is as a person to use just a random, random nobody that no one knows. So I think that's really, really good. Uh, All Might's strong physical image gets destroyed because he is broadcast to the world, or at least wherever they're broadcasting, at least the country, whatever. He's, um, he's broadcast in his normal non-muscle form, so this symbol of this really strong guy that nobody can beat gets destroyed there. And All Might brings up, oh well, my body may be broken, but my heart is still the symbol of peace and you'll never break my heart. So then All For One goes and proceeds to break his heart by revealing, of course, that Shigaraki Tomoda is Shimura Nana's grandson. Uh, I won't get too deep into that because I am, again, I've read the manga but I'm not going to spoil anything. I know that obviously we're going to get deeper into that eventually and uh, even as a manga reader, not knowing the entire details of everything, I'm still in the dark on some things. Um, I would say that obviously we're going to, for a long time to come, be learning a lot more about different things that went on and how that came to pass. Uh, so, <laughs> my favorite part of it probably is the, the emotion is amazing of 
All Might starting to crack and he's not smiling. He sounds like he's about to cry. The voice actor did a wonderful job. Um, but one of my favorite parts is just the line that All For One has where he's like, do you really question it? Isn't it something I would do? Uh, I also like, how, what was the other line he has that I like right at the beginning when he's um, when he's saying it? I like the whole, you know, maybe I have broken a little piece of that heart, um, but that's not what I was thinking of. Ah, oh, man, there, there's one really great line that I love. Oh, when he's saying, you know, I thought about what would bother you the most. I thought about what you would hate the most. This is what I decided to go with. How it's not just a physical taking him out, but he's like, I set up this guy that would have meant a lot to you. He's your master's grandson. I made him evil, and not only that, I made him evil and then set him up for you to beat him and smile and be like, yeah, look at me. I beat the guy that you should have been saving. So, uh, he there, there's a lot of layers into how badly he just fucked with All Might there, uh, so that was all great. Uh, I love how they portrayed um, Nana in the fire within him, and just generally him trying to protect the fire within him and stuff. All that was really good. Uh, Endeavor and Ed Shot arrive, and Endeavor sort of realizes his mistakes there, and I feel like this is one difference where. The anime maybe should have done something a little bit different. Uh, maybe even just changed one line a little bit. And I think it might not even be the anime. It might be the translation. Uh, but where Endeavor says, I despaired, in the um, in the manga he says, in my despair, I... And then uh, we have him looking surprised. And we have flashbacks of uh, Todoroki's mom and Shoto. Uh, and then he gets angry and he's like, why do you look like that all night? So I feel like... There's a bit of a difference there, whereas the meaning of him realizing, ah shit, I did all this to try to beat All Might and this is what he looks like, uh, the realization of how badly he screwed up is pretty clear in the manga, but it's not really as clear here in the anime that how much he realized, ah crap, I did all that. Um, so that could have been clearer, I feel like. Uh, we have the flashback to younger Torino, which I thought was really, uh, really good. Um, and he's thinking to himself how All Might has become this pillar. Everyone is now cheering him on, even the people that would have doubted before. And it's sort of his last job to, even though Tamura has eroded away a lot of the faith in heroes, he's showing that when push comes to shove and there's severe danger out there, he can still be that pillar and everybody will get behind him and cheer him on. Um, then All for One confirms it. He knows that All Might passed on his power to Izuku. Uh, All Might fights for, or fights to live for Izuku because he's like, you know what? That's the thing. I need to do what my master did for me. And uh, I love that the speech within him that Nana gives is probably, we can assume, the speech of her giving it to him when she first gave him the power of uh, One for All, and how that speech is sort of, it had a meaning back then, and now it has the meaning now as he's using the last bits to attack. Uh, and uh, another thing that was probably my favorite thing in the entire episode was how All for One says, you know, cheap tricks, this isn't your style, somebody has influenced you. And then he sacrifices his, sacrifices his arm and uses the broken arm to use his power and fight back, which is what Izuku does, and it's very much not like what All Might has said he ever had to do because he grasped the power very quickly. So, again, I like that we have this theme of Izuku saving All Might. Every time All Might is in trouble, even though it's not physically, Izuku back at the Sludge Monster, back at USJ, each time All Might's in trouble. Izuku, even though he never actually succeeds, he jumps in and he tries and that inspires All Might to save himself, which is kind of what the symbol of peace should be, inspiring the person to save themselves, because that's why All Might's the symbol of peace. That's what he brought up at the beginning where he's like, crime isn't going down no matter how many villains we stop. And that's, and he said it at the end of last season, where he's like, and that's because we need the symbol of peace to always be in the hearts of the citizens, always be in the hearts of the heroes so they know what to do, what to strive for, and to always be in the hearts of the villains so they know what to fear or what is out there if they do evil. So it kind of shows that Izuku does have what it takes to be the symbol of peace because he's 
inspired other characters to do this, but he inspires All Might to be a hero, even though All Might is the one who is his, who is his hero. Um, so that's probably my favorite thing in the entire episode. And I love the lines, goodbye, all for one, and then he blows them away with the United States of Smash, and then goodbye, one for all, as the fire fades away. And then he stands in triumph, and I love that it's brought up, um, I keep saying how much I love everything, I feel like I've just overused that term to transition and start my sentences, but um, Gran Torino says, you know, leave him be, let him do what he's doing, this is his last job as the symbol of peace, because his last job isn't the, as the symbol of peace isn't just to beat all for one. Beating all for one, beating a villain is whatever. His last job is standing triumphantly, because that's going to be the pillar that uh, keeps everything up. Him standing triumphantly is what's going to inspire the heroes, it's what's going to put fear into the villains, it's what's going to give peace to the citizens. So, him standing triumphantly is his last job, not defeating all for one, even though that's definitely a part of it. Um, but it's more about the ideal than the actual physical action. So, uh, I like that a lot. And then, what's next? Oh yeah, we had the Your Next scene. That was beautifully done. I thought the anime did an amazing job with that scene, um, where it's got a lot of depth to it. All the citizens are like supported and feel happy because they're like yes he's a symbol of peace no villains can take him down and then Izuku being the person who feels the exact opposite because he knows what he really means is I can't do this anymore I'm out of power so I love that and there was a scene that I really thought should have been in this episode I guess and I really really hope we're getting it sometime next episode but it followed directly after this one in the manga, and it was part of the same chapter as all of this stuff that was in this episode. And I felt like it should have been either directly after that Izuku scene, um, or it should have been an after credit scene. I was expecting it to be an after credit scene, but we didn't get it at all, which I thought was weird personally. I thought it fit really well here, so I'm not sure why it was pushed back to next episode. And hopefully it is at least pushed back to next episode. I don't know why they would cut out a scene like that. Um, so yeah, some general discussions to have. When I first went on Twitter this morning after watching the episode, I saw some complaints from some people I follow about the changing of, like, nobody was like, oh, it's a big serious thing. Everybody was like, I love the episode, but, throwing that button there, um, they're like, they changed Nana's character design a little bit to make her a little bit less muscular looking. She's a little less beefy, I guess. Um, and they're like, it's kind of a shame because she has a really cool character design. And I think it's cool either way. Like I said, it, nobody thought it was that big a deal. And I myself don't think it's that big a deal. But I think it is worth bringing up that they've kind of done that for a few characters that have been like, eh, at least with female characters a lot more than male. Because you look at the uh, first episode, the premiere of this season, when we had all the, all the guys without their shirts off, and all of them had very different body styles and types, and they looked different. And then all the girls typically look the same, whereas in the manga there are some differences there. Even though Horikoshi brings up he has trouble doing female character designs and making them look the way he wants them to look. Um, I feel like most of the girls and women in Boku no Hero Academia with the anime, most of the bodies look very much the same uh, when they when there should be some differences that I feel like are lost in the translation from manga to anime. Sort of like the less buffening of uh, Nana Shimura. Uh, Uradaka is a bit less thick. Um, Kyoka is a bit less thin. I always view Ashido Mina as really athletic looking. I kind of feel like the best way I would describe it is sort of like you know somebody who does gymnastics where it's not like ripped crazy vascularity type of uh, weightlifting muscle uh, but they're just kind of a more stocky muscular build I kind of or like a dancer um, that I feel like is more Ashido Mina's body type and again she just looks they all look the same in the anime so uh, I don't know it's kind of weird it's not really a huge deal oh and a big one for me is one that I was talking about last season where I was like I was really um uh, I was really like eh, not knowing if they made Toga too stereotypical anime girl cute 
because Toka's whole thing is being very, very disheveled. Like in the manga, she has crazy bag. She always has like the dark circles, bags around her eyes, whatever. That kind of effect. Her eyes are never like completely straight. Like one's always more open than the other, or like her actual eyes, one will be a little off to the side or something. They're never like perfectly symmetrical or anything. Her teeth are pointy and they're not like crazy crooked or anything, but they're they're not perfect, you know? And of course her clothes are always like not really dirty looking, but really disheveled. So um, I don't know if they made her too anime girl cute in the anime. Um, and that's something that I was always... Um, that's something that I brought up last season that I wasn't really sure about. Uh, for me, too, a difference that I had watching this episode um, and and reading the manga, I got emotional for both, like really emotional for both. I loved both. But my emotion was at different places in both of them. In the manga, I was really emotional at everyone cheering on All Might. Um, I was really, really emotional at the flashbacks to Nana th to the point of like, tearing up most of the time when I read it. Uh, but watching the episode, I was just kind of like, ah, oh, that's a really cool scene. That's a really good scene for both of those instances. But I got really, really emotional at the final attack from All Might, and there was another, oh, and at the Your Next scene. Both of those I was really emotional at in the anime, whereas in the manga they were both like, oh, cool, the fight's ending, that's a really cool attack, I'm all hyped up. Or, um, ah, that's a really touching scene, but it's whatever. I didn't really feel as much for them in the manga, but they were the source of my feels in the episode. So it's weird that two scenes that I felt a lot for in the manga I didn't feel as much for here, and two that I didn't feel as much for there I felt a, a friggin' ton for here. Uh, the OST was crazy amazing. The use of it was great this episode. I think there were a few parts may they maybe could have gone bigger on the, um... Like when they were all cheering for All Might and stuff, I feel like they could have gone for a bigger OST track there. Uh, but for the most part, everything was so great that can't really complain about anything particularly. Animation was absolutely beautiful. The story was very, very deep. Um, and now we get to see in the future, what is what is the uh, world going to be like without this symbol of peace there? Without All Might there to back up the characters and all that? Uh, how's the story going to go? So, yeah, either way, I'm excited. We only have two or three more episodes, probably, until we get a new opening. I'm excited to see what'll be in there, but I totally figure they're spoiling the season finale fight. They're, they're going to totally spoil some things. Uh, they even did in this opening, I guess, technically, but I'm not even going to care, just like for this opening, because I'm going to be so hyped. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess at some point we'll have a mid-season break, too, like a week or two off. I believe we did last season. I'm actually pretty much 100% certain we did, so um, I guess we'll get a mid-season break at some point in a week or two as well. Uh, that's that's going to suck having a week or two off. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it. I can't think of anything else to discuss. As a score, I'd give it 10.5 uh, 10 lingering flames out of 10. For me, this is probably one of my favorite episodes in the entire series. I I'm not sure how I would compare it to Todoroki Shoto Origin or to Climax, two of my other favorite episodes. I do think, though, that I actually liked My Hero more. I think this is probably my second favorite episode this season. I think I liked My Hero is probably still my favorite episode this season. Um, so yeah, that is it. Thank you once again for watching. Like, if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this uh, episode. <laughs> I almost said chapter again. <laughs> what you thought of this episode? What you thought of my thoughts on it? Subscribe for more uh, Boku no Hero Academia, both anime and manga. For the manga, I try to be super, super uh, spoiler-free in the um, thumbnails and titles so that I don't ruin anything for anybody who is uh, an anime-only watcher that watches my videos and no one's ever complained about anything, so I think I'm doing a pretty okay job. Uh, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to talk to you there or uh, keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. Um, and if you want to talk to me or more people that watch my videos on our Discord server, then just ask and I'll give you a link to the server. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.